like to invite the children to come forward to help me read the scripture. You guys want to come forward and read the Bible with me? Um, right? So we all have different learning styles, 
And so we covered all of them today, right? So if you like to talk and listen, that's here. If you don't want to talk, then there's a meditation space in room three. And then if you want to talk, but use your hands, because that's how you learn best, that's in the octagon, right? So everyone's comfortable. You still have an option to leave, is what I'm getting. Okay. <laughs> um, so look around, because the closest three to five people might be behind you, right? They might be in front of you. So figure out where you would group together with three to five people to be able to talk. So, everyone's good, right? It gives you lots of options to be comfortable. So on your piece of paper, there is that first question, right? Why don't you take a few moments um, to answer that, right? Maybe, you know, one or two at the most, right? The first question is, what gifts do you have in your life because of Jesus, right? And I would like you, <laughs> you aren't going to have to share just yet. So I was just warning you that at some point you're going to have to share. <laughs> okay. So what I'd like you to do is think critically or creatively, though, about the gifts that you have in your life, because sometimes the gifts of God were at first not seen as gifts. Right? Do you know what I mean? Um, sometimes they, there are people or places or things that cause us pain and grief and heartache or hard work, but in the end, when we look back at them, they are proved to be tremendous gifts from God. Does that make sense? Right? I know we all have things like that, so I want us to think about those kind of things as well. Is that things external to us, or is that things within us? It could be things that have grown within us, that are gifts that God has created within us. Sure. Either way, external or internal. Mm -hmm. Gifts of God. Everyone understand the question? to the side, but we're going to come back to it, okay? And I want to talk just a little bit about um, Isaiah, so I'm going to do a little bit more talking than I normally do in this room this time, because I'm starting Advent, um, and Aaron's starting a class today actually on Isaiah, because often during Advent we read the prophet Isaiah, that's often a prophet that's attached to the Advent season. So Isaiah is a book about how God's justice brings us the gifts of life one of the ways you would describe Isaiah, I think. Isaiah is one of the voices that God has used to help us understand also what God's definition of justice is, right? So it's right to say that the tradition of Isaiah does not predict Jesus, right? Prophets don't predict the future. Prophets speak truth about the present. That's what a prophet is in the scriptures, right? Sometimes in our today world, we think of... Um, Prophets as like soothsayers or palm readers or fortune tellers. That's not what a prophet was in the scripture, right? So even though Isaiah, like all of the times when we read things that we think Isaiah is talking about Jesus, he actually was talking about a real human being at the time of Isaiah, right? So the early church used its imagination with the Holy Spirit, and they found hints of Jesus. Ooh, that sounds also like what God's doing with Jesus, even though God did something with Hezekiah in one case, Cyrus in another case. Cyrus was actually called the Messiah by the Jewish people, right? So they, they read the text that we read, and they saw things that were applicable to their day. And we do the same thing. 
We read the texts and we say, see things that are applicable, applicable to us, right? So throughout Isaiah, there's this tension, though, between God's promise and God's justice, right? God has promised to protect and sustain Jerusalem and David's dynasty. That's a promise that the Jewish people hold on to. God promised that. But at the same time, the city, when Isaiah lived, lie, lay in ruins, right? Isaiah claims that this destruction is because of or a result of unfaithfulness, right? So God's justice must counter God's promise, right? God will judge the city and its wayward economic and military practices, for starters. That's a big part of the beginning, which are unfaithful, right? And so then we look at it and say, well, what does this mean to us, right? Jerusalem becomes a metaphor, right? You can read, you need to read, we need to read Isaiah as poetry, right? That things have greater, deeper meanings, right? So Jerusalem becomes a metaphor, not for us individually, right? But for the systems that are true in our world, right? So it could be the economic systems, the military systems, national systems, religious systems, communal systems, <coughs> those things. The, the things that have power that make the world go the way the world is going, right? Uh, commerce systems. We could, we could go on and on, but there's lots of things that work, make the world work. So God has promised to protect us in our systems, we think, right? But we lie in ruin, right? And Isaiah claims that this destruction is a result of our unfaithfulness also. Some of the ways that our world is falling apart is because of our unfaithfulness also. So what will justice look like then? What does God's justice look like? So I'm going to stop and say, Pete and I were listening to this podcast, um, Ibu Patel, I don't know if you know him, but he's a fantastic movement, uh, mover in the interfaith world in the last 20 years. Um, and he was talking about how he goes to college campuses, and one of the things he's been saying in his, in his routine now is um, that diversity, you know, all, we, you know we, we value this diversity thing of, you know, race and gender and uh, sexual orientation and um, we have all these this diversity that we, we adore, right? Or we, we, um, we um, hold as important. Diversity um, also has to include differences of opinions of what justice means, right? So my opinion of justice might very well be different than your opinion of justice, right? Now, at some point, I think we start to agree on things, right? But, but how we get there is not always the same, right? We have very different, and that that's really hard, particularly for liberal audiences, um, to understand that we have different, different ways of justice, because um, justice right now is a very important liberal ideal, right? So, particularly social justice, right? So, when I was listening, Pete and I stopped and were like, gosh, that's really hard to hear, right? Because if I value diversity, then I have to value someone else's understanding of how justice happens, right? And how God wants, how even God would want, like if justice, if God is, and we have an idea of justice, then that's what we want God to do, or help us do, right? So, um, it, it got me thinking about how so many times in life I want God to come. Like I started the service today by saying we want God to show up again in, in Christmas, right? We want Jesus to come again. And I have a particular idea of what I mean when I ask God to come, right? I have a particular idea of healing and wholeness. I know what I want God to do in the world. I know how I, I want God to make things right um, with us people on the earth, right? God doesn't work for me, right? I work for God. So God is going to do some things that at first often really doesn't look like what I want God to do. And that, have, that goes back to the gifts that we see in our life, that more often than not, the things that happen in our life are not the things that we actually ask for. They might be close, but they're not exactly, right? And often, we're irritated by that, right? That this is not what I asked for. You know, where are you, you know? And so, the passage that we read today, and this gets to where I am, Isaiah's saying, let's go to the hill. The fir first thing that God wants to do is say, let's go to the place of worship. And the first mark of it is that people will lay down their swords and they will make plows out of them, right? That will lay down war and will pick up instruments of communal, you know, communal identity, right? Will lay down warfare and 
and pick up community. That's our first idea of what justice looks like. So now, go back to your pages, right? You have um, justice bingo, <laughs> is what, I, what it's called. So I want you to pick one word for in each box, right? So you have three categories. What are three things that you would want a judge to know? Three things, three skills that you would want a judge to have, and three qualities that you would want a judge to have, right? So that one in each box. Three things you think judges should know, one in each box. Three skills judges should have, three qualities judges should have. No, that was just for your own. Okay. I had a lot of stuff to offer you today. A lot of it got cut. <laughs> you can use some of those things. I mean, I, that's for your reference. That when I said we all have different ideas of justice, in this room, all of us are represented somewhere in that, in the combination of those things there. Yeah. So, that might help you. This is when you're going to turn to your neighbor and talk a little bit. And you're going to see if you have any bingo, right? You can see if you share any common answers so that we can see that even amongst us are differences. You guys are right, it's not easy. I'm not giving you an easy assignment. Some of it, for some, it might be, depending on how. But it's okay if you're having a hard time. It's okay if our faith makes us think, everyone. It's okay if sometimes our faith stumps us. No, one in each box. Just one. One word in each box. One, like one thing. One, 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 yeah, one thing in each box. Not several things. What did it say? So in other words, you want three, yes, <laughs> three boxes for knowledge, three boxes for skills, and three boxes for quality. No? Yeah. You answered nine. Well, I think it's like a Oh, you did. He's an overachiever. I'll take your husband. It's not a shock. It's not a shock, right? All right. So turn to the people around you and see if you have, if you start, like, the way you would see bingo, right? Do you have any of the squares the same or similar? You know, see if you see if you share ideas. Thank you. 
I guess, sort of like, uh, not just surface heads, but like, so I spent the Spirit in our heart, so all the fruits of the Holy Spirit. 
has given you love, patience, joy, kindness, friendliness, faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I thought. So I think I did it wrong. I don't know if there's any wrong. But I mean, I've tried, then, then we had the discussion, yeah. and I broke it down. Mm -hmm. So I put knowledge, qualities. Oh, we're going knowledge? Oh, knowledge no, no, we're, we're trying to see how, what are the things? Go back. Okay, stop. I'm sorry. Stop. stop. <laughs> the gifts that you have up front, how did they change you? I became more compassionate. I believe God was God was compassionate to me, and then I became more compassionate. God was compassionate to you, and then you became compassionate. Uh, I learned to be more accepting, open to ideas, to listen and understand. So you became more accepting, open to ideas, met better understanding, right? How are, how are you changed by the gifts at the top of your sheet? How did those gifts change you, Marie? More patient, right? It's funny, I learned more compassion and patient. I have more compassion and more patience based on the gifts. Based on the gifts. Yes. yes. Right? It's given me like a, a road map to be more, more like Jesus to the everyday to strive for that. Yeah, so these gifts that we have in our life become a new road map. Right? That we have these things and it reminds us like anchors. Oh, I'm to be this thing because that's what I cultivated at that point in my life. And now I'm going to take that new cultivation and move it into the next season of my life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's where I'm going yeah. right, with it. Okay? The reason, I'm, the reason I'm going at it this way is it's hard because I'm asking you to look back and then look back again and then look forward. I think sometimes we just don't really want to believe that God is not completely happy with who we are. <laughs> right? Like, I, 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 I hate to even say it, right? Like, people say, oh, no, no, you can't, like, I can't end this, I can't end this service this way because you guys will never come back, right? You have a mean pastor who tells us that we're not good enough, right? And you don't ever hear that from me. What I am saying is that I am not foolish enough to say that I am exactly what God wants me to be. I'm just not, guys. I'm just not. I fail tremendously in a lot of areas of my life. So do you. <laughs> so do you. And so the book of Isaiah is trying to say, God promises all these things. Well, guess what? You've got to be that. You've got to become that promise. They made the tags and decorated tags that we're going to use the rest of the time, and they're putting them in the box behind me. Oh. Right? So when we look back and think of the gifts that were, like, didn't maybe look like gifts at first, we realize that was God actually judging us. Like, God was saying, there's a piece of you I'm going to change. And in order to do that, I'm going to give you this gift. But the gift doesn't feel like a gift at first. Sometimes the gift feels like... Right? Are you guys... This was a harder thing. Okay, I have some people like totally shaking their heads. I have other people going like, what? Right? I understand what you say, but yeah, my don't have anything to do with it. Okay, right. It's what, it, you know, that's somewhat, on some level, that's just the beginning of Advent and the beginning of Lent. Like, okay. anytime we start a season, we've got to poke a big hole so that we can walk through the hole together, right. yes. you know? So, the journey, I think, for us to realize is, it's, and I, I wrote it beautifully, it's a living book, so I say it with manuscript creatures. It's easy to rely on the gifts of Christmas, right? It's easy for the next four weeks to just start practicing all of this consumerism, that if I buy the right gift, and if I get the right gift, then life will be fantastic come December 26th, right? Mm -hmm. And that that's what this month is, to create a better Christmas season. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that when God does it, God doesn't usually start with things that feel like a gift. When God is trying to make us into something new, so that we can receive something new, it often comes to us in a packaging that is challenging. And that we, we read Isaiah for that reason. Because he's asking us to look at God's promises and say, you've got to work for that. And in order to get that, I'm going to show you judgment, which is justice. My justice. And my justice isn't exactly what we all think it is. Right? God's justice is different. Than ours. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Tell us about your tags. How was that? How was your conversation? It was good. Um, we got into the glitter, so you'll see these are some very good <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we had fun. Um, but we just talked a little bit about 
the things that make us anxious um, during the Christmas season. The preparation um, during Advent is sometimes not probably what God is asking us to do. We're running around and busying ourselves and preparing, and in the midst, we're not taking time to make space for peace and for love and for hope and for joy. So we talked about the things that we, um, the gifts that we want to receive from Christ this season, and maybe they aren't the things that we would have for ourselves, as Pastor Beth just said. And one thing that we all talked about a lot was patience. Mm -hmm. That we, yeah, we really want Christ to give us a lot of patience in this sure. season. So we kind of all agreed on that, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyone here from the meditation room, or are they still happy and happily? <laughs> <laughs> they are. Um, They're not coming back. Fantastic. We're <laughs> seriously candlelight. <laughs> 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 